I'm Cynthia Trevino. Welcome to another segment of Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And I'm your host for WOW Women. Our topic today is, do women entrepreneurs help each other enough to meet their business goals? Do we collaborate enough? Do we do enough to help each other find new business? And our leading lady today is my dear friend, Helen Chang. And Helen is the founder CEO of Author Bridge Media. Helen, thank you for being here. You're welcome, and I'm so delighted to be here. And Cynthia, we've known each other for so long. We have. It's just so fun to be in this space with you together. Oh, thank you, thank you. This is so great. <laughs> so, um, our topic today is one that uh, I've been thinking about for a few months because an article was published in Fortune Magazine last summer about do women help each other enough in business? And I really got to thinking about it. And so what I want to talk to you about is, you know, do you think women entrepreneurs, women business owners, do enough to help each other, whether they're solo business owners, whether they have a team, a virtual team, or a big team, or a medium team, or a large team? Do we do enough when it comes to, like, helping each other find business, helping each other find partners? You know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I think my experience in the entrepreneurial space is that women are more than willing to help each other and really go out of their way and, um, you know, give women and tell other women about opportunities. I don't think we're as good at necessarily directly um, making connections or directly saying, oh, so and so. But you know what? A lot of entrepreneurial women I know are you know, women, they're agents of their own, they're strong, um, mindful women, and sometimes they'll just say, you should go talk to so-and-so, you should go talk to so-and-so, or whatever, and they'll very directly um, give give direction. So, I've had a wonderful experience, you know, yes, yes. and uh, certainly most of our team is women. In fact, we have to, we have to like work hard to have more men on our team and <laughs> diversify that way. We do, we have men too, but, um, but I have found that the experience has been um, much better as entrepreneurs, I think. And there's organizations for women entrepreneurs, and as long as you find people who are, um, what is it called? Um, Collaborative? Colla not so much um, complementary. Right, like complimentary right, that's true. to you in industry, then it's a lot easier that way. Right, as long as you're not trying to write to pair up with people that don't, with other women that don't do the, the same thing. So this article I was reading, and it, it just sort of, um, and, and maybe you haven't experienced this, but I think I have. And what she said was, um, she did a study of women in a professional group. Uh, they're like lawyers and accountants, and they're all trying to build their own book of business, of course, and, and get clients for their firms. And they said they, they became fast friends, they were good at masterminding, they were good at like a shoulder to cry on when, oh my God, this deal fell through, or you know, while my employee didn't work, when something didn't work, they were really good at that. But what she discovered was when it came to asking for help, like an introduction or a referral, or do you know anybody at X firm where I'm trying to get my company into, right? To make a pitch that the women felt, too many of the women felt insulted because they thought they were friends with the other woman, right? And so, and you've never experienced that? Well, I, I would I would say not so much when people ask me for referrals because I'm happy to give referrals in the right context, but I would say the opposite is true. I'm afraid to ask for referrals because I don't want to ruin a friendship, right? I don't want this woman to think that I'm only after her for her contacts or her business, whatever. You know what I mean? So I feel that embarrassment because I'd rather be social and be friends than have a business situation. And I've actually said that in organizations right. or groups that I've been. Yes. It's like, look, the friendship is more important to me than the business side of it. You know, I'm like really, really careful. So I think there is truth to that, you know? Right, and I'm glad you said that because the other thing she discovered after uh, she did a ton of interviews with women, and then she talked to a lot of men, and men said, look, you know, men are transactional, like business, and they only talk with their men friends about sports and business. So when when a guy goes and asks for an introduction or referral, uh, you know, or to help make a pitch, they're like super happy because that's what they do. 
the women she found are more relational, and, and this was in her, her, her little survey, and, and that they do feel like, number one, the same thing you said, they're afraid to ask, because they do, and then when somebody asks them, they feel like, I thought we were friends. And so that got me to thinking, that's why I wanted to talk about this, because yeah. I thought, oh my gosh. And so um, I guess it, 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 it's, it's sort of a bit cultural, right? A little bit, that's just how women are, because we do form friendships. And she said, women become fast friends more quickly than men do. And that's just, that's just how, we're, how we're wired, I think. Mm -hmm. But so here's the question, how do we make a good ask? And how do we teach ourselves and our other women entrepreneurial uh, collaborators, how do we teach to make a good ask? Because I know people have said, you know, um, like, I, what's a good ask? Because everybody needs more clients or wants more clients. You can't just say, oh, I need more clients. Help me find a client. Well, I mean, that's like, you know, that's a big ask, right? So how do we learn, teach ourselves to make an ask that's very specific and manageable, right? I mean, something like, um, oh, I, I really would want to get into this company. Do you know anybody there? That's a pretty good ask, right? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> no, is that that's so? That's too this is this is what I learned. Right. Okay, these are things that we do. So I think it's really important. I mean, the training that I've done really focuses on relationship, and I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that we as women really appreciate relationship. And I think if anything, we should embrace that and use that as part of our asks, right? So just to give you an example, you know, one little trick, shall we say, on social media, for example, like I don't, we don't come out and say, come and join my book boot camp, right? right, right. Here, here, register here, right. and this is how much it is, and today only did it out on social media, because it's a huge turnoff, yes. right? Yeah. But I want to let people know I have it, right? So I did this social media thing, it was a photo of me, this is just an example, right? A photo of me holding this dress, and this dress, and this dress, like three dresses. Which one should I wear for my big presentation on the second day? Right? Right. Of my boot camp. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Link. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yeah. So it's relational. It is. And it's about me and it's personal. But at the same time, I'm kind of slipping it in there that this thing is going on. Right? So like in social media, I do that. You know, I'm, oh, here I'm having a green smoothie thinking about my webinar that's coming up. Right? So I'm, I'm really focusing on the relationship and right. then slipping in, oh, by the way, I have this thing going on. So if I were to ask for a client, I might say something like, hey, Cynthia, you know what? I just love how you're hosting this show and you're so brilliant and I love all your marketing techniques. Um, and um, I so appreciate that we got to work together. Um, if you happen to know anybody who needs to have a book written in a really uh, professional way uh, that honors their voice, um, is there anyone that you think could use my services? You know, so what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the relationship first. Yes, I like that. Right? Having like that relationship you are. Yes. first and having that be most important and then saying, oh, by the way, here's my ask kind of thing. And what else right. can I do for you? Right. Kind of thing, right? Right. So, and that sort of thing, you know, I think, I think of like women for centuries and centuries and centuries, right? we would all gather around the village well, yes. right? And we'd all be there like scrubbing clothing or something Or like we that. Or weaving, or pounding corn, and right. we'd be talking, right? Exactly, so, exactly, right? So, so, so we form these deep relationships because around the corn mashing right. and, and the weaving, right. we, we had a lot of time to talk about. Right, cool and chit chat about this right. and that right. and this. Right. And, Oh, you should find out about this. Oh, I should tell you about this. What do you think? And I'll exchange some sugar for, for right. some of your right. whatever, you know, You're whatever, right. Right? right? So I think it's kind of like drawing from that and, and not trying to fight that men are this way and, oh, why aren't we women more that way? It's more like let's embrace what we have and what we actually are and then, but bring it up to date in terms of exchange of goods that we need now, right? right? It, I'm sorry, <laughs> a little bit to the transactional side, right? Right. Because, the, and, and I still think for me, I think I'm gonna start asking this question of all my women entrepreneurial friends. It's like, what's a good ask? Because I'm always struggling with that. How, you know, because I like to say to people, how can I support you, to women, you know? And, and 
And it's like, it, that's, that's a big question, right? Support, what, you know, what does that mean? So um, in this article, the woman, the author of the article did have one recommendation. She said, every time you meet with a woman, whether it's professional or social, you should ask her, say to her, what are two specific things I can do to help you? Oh, that's so good. Isn't that good? And, and, and adding the word specific, because that's like either um, do you know of a group or do you know of a speaking opportunity or do you know, I guess I always come back to, do you know anybody in that group? Or for me, I would say, do you know any women who are fabulous at what they do mm -hmm. and yet they detest marketing themselves? Because that's who I help, right? And, and you know, and because a lot of women are great at marketing, right? So, um, and a lot of marks. And a lot of marks, exactly. You are really good at it. I have to say, plug for Cynthia. Thank you. Thank really, you. really good. You so, helped us a lot. So that is, that, that is, so it's kind of like, I'm still kind of on this thing about a good ask. So I like your idea of a good ask, and it starts with the relationship, because that's true to who we are. It is. You know? It is. Well, you know, I have to say, I recently had a change. Uh, so, you know, I've been going on speaking opportunities and so on and so forth, and um, my most successful speaking opportunities are where I have a relationship with the organizer. Oh, wow. Yeah, and not so much a relationship in terms of, like, um we know we just know each other but we actually work together oh wow like they've yeah. been our client right or right. i've been their client right or we've had some kind of you know working relationship together so we actually know each other and we're familiar with each other's with each other's work right right so when they introduce me on stage there's an authenticity about it there is and yes. it's and people can feel that the yeah. audience can feel that it's right? just like when i introduced you i said you're my dear friend right. and, and that's why we can you know like just sort of sit down and and, exactly. and, and say okay let's just talk about this exactly because, we, because what we're hoping is that we spark conversations because you know and this is my my personal mission, I rant on this all the time. There are study after study that show that women entrepreneurs compared to men entrepreneurs doing the same exact work, like the gap in earnings makes the gap in corporate look like a cakewalk. Yes. All right. So I would agree. 30 percent um, is one study that was done by um, an invoicing company. And I'll put uh, the link to this survey and the link to the article I referenced also in the show notes. But um, it was, it, and it just like, that just makes me crazy. And so I think, you know, and, and of course there's tons of reasons for that. Women don't feel comfortable. They feel like, women feel like we have to be 90% sure we can do something before we pitch for a big contract. That's right. right? And men say, 10%, I got it, I'll learn the rest. And so that's pretty well documented, you know, throughout the world of women in business. So, um, so for me, it's like if we begin to help each other more, then we can get to the point where we're more at parity. Because, um, you know, women entrepreneurs should earn the same as men entrepreneurs, right? The gap shouldn't be, you know, a 30% is the best study I found that women earn 30% less. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's wrong with this picture, right? We left our jobs, we left working for somebody else so we could write our own ticket, do our own thing, right? Take care of our kids, have a life, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, have you seen any of the documentaries or the movie about Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Yes, yes. I saw the first, I thought, I saw the first the movie week. or the documentary? I saw the first, I saw the documentary that was done. Wasn't it fantastic? It was fantastic. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it was like that in that time back back then, you know, where know. like in the 60s, a woman couldn't even apply for a mortgage by herself. She needed exactly. a, a male to do that, you know, so we have come really far since then, you know, I mean, there right. are women CEOs and stuff, but boy, there's a lot more to go, isn't there? Right. And even for women entrepreneurs, I, there is also, I think it was the middle 80s, a woman could not get a loan for a business she owned by herself from a bank without a male co-signer. <laughs> I mean, that was 1985, and I mean, I'm dating myself, but like, okay, wow, don't, that's just like, that's rah, 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 rah. I know, that's crazy, that's it's crazy. crazy. So, so, yeah, so as we wrap up here, I would like to um, kind of, what, what are three takeaways we can give our listeners and um, of ideas? Like, you had the one about um, beginning with the relationship when you give an ask. I love that one, right? Right. 
Um, the second, what was the second one we said? Um, you know so what, I want to, I want to say one more thing. Sorry, sure. I, yeah. you, you guys can edit it, right? Okay. You know, one thing I've noticed is that women clients, women who engage us, yes, sometimes say things to us if they're frustrated and they're unhappy, they'll say things to us that they would never say to a male. That's interesting. And it's very, it is very interesting. And on one hand, I think because they feel closer to us, but on the other hand, it's almost like, hey, you shouldn't be saying stuff like that. That's not, that's not cool. Right. You know, in other words, they'll give criticism in a personal way rather than in a professional way. I, that's surprising to me. They'll, yeah, that. they're asked for corrections in a personal rather than a professional way, right? And it's very interesting to see that. And it's kind of sad, but it, that does happen. It is sad, I agree, I agree. No, and, and, and because we all need to be professional to everybody all the time, even if we are encountering people that are less than professional. I mean, it's just, we have to take the high road, right? Yeah. Because we're entrepreneurs, it's our reputation. Everything we do is our reputation and our brand. So, so our first tip is, if you're going to ask um, another woman entrepreneur, yes. for, is, is start wrap with a relationship, wrap it, it around, and say how much you appreciate her, and then, um, and then make the ask. And then I think our second tip was, every time we meet someone, and I'm really gonna endeavor to do this, um, because what I always say, what can I do to support you? But that's not enough. I like the two specific things I can do. I love right. that. Yes. There are two specific things. Right, because then we're going to think of things that are managed, right? Yes. They're not super big things. Yes. Or, or yeah. Yes. And then the third tip, what would the third tip be for our listeners? It would be something around... Um, Go for it and ask for it, even if you don't think you're qualified. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. You know? Yes, and along with that, practice asking, right? Because we, we all say we don't ask enough, so practice asking, even when you're just And having, you're willing to get that no, that's yes. the key thing. Yes. The, I would get hurt all the time when yes. people say no, and like, I, I don't even ask. I know. Because I don't want to embrace that. Me but too. you're right. I we agree. should just keep asking. And if we just practice, if we say to our friends, like when we're masterminding, and, and like you and I are just, we have mastermind calls every once in a while, I'll say, okay, I'm going to practice, practice a specific ask. How does it sound? Like, you know, do you know anybody at, you know, this, I want to, I'd love to speak in front of this group. Do you know anybody who's, who's, who, if you don't know the organizer, do you know somebody else who's spoken there, right? Because then they might. So these are, if you start thinking about what are specific things I can ask. So we should have on our phones a list of five specific things to ask That's our great idea, shouldn't we? Yeah. Shouldn't we? So you I, know, I want to say one thing, and again, you might want to just edit this out, but in other words, we have to be more like sperm. <laughs> Less like eggs, right? Right. Like, You just go ahead and ask. Just, it, it just start swimming. Just keep swimming. Yeah, just keep swimming. And you know that there's millions of you out there, right. and, and some of those are just going to get shot down, but you will land that egg. We do not have just one precious egg to ask. That's right. We have tons we totally of ways do. to ask. I love it. I love, I love that image. I love that image. That is so good. Well, I think that's our show for today. This was great, Helen. Thank you so much for being here. This was so much fun. I love having this conversation. Um, Helen Chang, CEO and founder of Author Bridge Media. And um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And um, thanks to all of our viewers. And we'll be back with another session of Women Lead TV. And this will be Wow Women. So see you soon. Have a great day.